Good afternoon and warm greetings to everyone present here. Respected special guests, Sri Keto Setio Sekose, Director, Youth Resources and Sports, Government of Naglen. Sri Changilong, Regional Director, Northeast NSS, SNO Naglen, esteemed dignitaries from Directorate of Youth Resources and Sports, deans, NSS program officers, and NSS volunteers from across Northeast, it is my immense pleasure to welcome each one of you to the inaugural program of the Northeast. NSS Youth Festival 2024, organized by the National Service Scheme Cell Naglen and Directorate of Youth Resources and Sports Naglen under the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, hosted by Tetso College. My heart brims with gratitude as I stand before each one of you to witness this momentous day that has brought together the NSS community from across Northeast to celebrate the essence of what NSS truly embodies, which is the spirit of oneness that defines and strengthens us all. So in the true NSS spirit, may I now request everyone to kindly stand for the NSS song. In all your ways acknowledge God and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. As we commence with the program, may I now invite on stage Mr. Daniel Khan, HOD, Political Science, Tetsu College to kindly invoke God's presence, blessing and guidance in our midst. very blessed good afternoon to all of you present here, respected chairperson, dignitaries on the dais, staff, media, and dear students. I am happy and blessed to have this opportunity uh, to invoke God's presence uh, in your midst. And we are here, people from different faiths and different backgrounds. But I believe that almost all the religions of our country have similar teachings and values. So before I pray, I would like to read a few Bible verses, which is taken from Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. It says, Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve. It means that with humility and love, we must serve others. We are here to give our selfless service to our society and to our nations, whichever way, small way or bigger way we can, uh, whatever positions that we hold. Secondly, Matthew 20 verse 26 says, whoever wants to be Whoever wants to become great among you must serve. So it clearly says that all of us, we are looking to become great or do something in our life. But Bible says that you must, we must serve to become something. And I am very inspired since I come to know when I was also a student about NSS. And the motto of NSS says, not me, but you. So which means very similar this passage and it is matching with the Holy Bible. So this motto also reflects us to urge or uphold the need for self-service to our society. And finally John 4 verse 9 says, As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. So I understand in this way that as long as we are strong, healthy, young, energetic, we should serve one another. We should serve. We should have the mentality to serve 
others. And God has a purpose to send us to this world. And the purpose, he himself very clearly telling us that we should serve one another. So, with this, shall we all look to God in prayer? I will request everyone to close our eyes and let us pray to God. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we gathered here, Lord, with hearts full of anticipation and joy, Lord, we ask and pray, Lord, your presence to be with us throughout this NSS Youth Festival 2020-2024, Lord. And also, Lord, we pray, Lord, that use this platform to transform, to inspire the young minds and lives of our country, Lord. We know, Lord, that these children who are present here, Lord, they're going to become leader one day, Lord. But, Lord, if the leader has no, no proper visions, and if the leader doesn't follow you, Lord, then they cannot bring any change in this society, Lord. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, especially for the children who are here, that you use these five days, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, transform them, inspire them for your glory, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord, to come. We also pray, Lord, let your presence remain upon all of us and throughout this program. As well as, Lord, let your presence abide to each and every one of us now and forevermore. With this, we ask this prayer in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to be standing here and welcome everyone. Uh, like Sir Tanil said, uh, it's first time I'm getting to see the NSS motto that is uh, not me but you and as soon as I saw this line it really inspired me actually and the way our NSS unit in our college also the way they do the social service it really inspired me I have donated my blood when they have uh, arranged a camp for that as well so it was really inspiring and after getting to see this motto it again inspired me but I, I think the world is going a little bit backward. Not you, but me. I think the world is going something like this. Not you, but me first. A little bit selfish. But I believe with the, with the festival like this, with NSS Confederation, I believe that the young minds will be rejuvenated, and I believe that this young generation will change the motto and live according to the motto to, to make this world a better place. So I, on behalf of Tetsuo College and our dedicated NSS unit, uh, we extend a warm and heartfelt, feeling, uh, heartfelt welcome to all the esteemed guests, delegates, and participants of the Nordic NSS Festival. This year, uh, we gather under the inspiring theme of Youth Format Parat, celebrating the vibrant spirit and immense potential of the Northeast young mind. We are honored to have our Sir Shiri Ketosito Sikosi, uh, Director, Youth Resources and Sports, Government of Nagaland, to grace this occasion with his presence. And we are also delighted to welcome Sir uh, Shiri Changjilong, Regional Director, NSS Northeast Region, and esteemed dignitaries of Youth Resources and Sports. This festival is a platform for the young minds <laughs> and the young leaders for tomorrow to connect, to collaborate, and to share ideas through the different workshop, cultural exchanges, and competition. You will explore your strengths, discover new perspectives, and forge lasting friendships. Let the spirit of Youth for Pilot ignite a passion within you to contribute to the nation's growth and development. We are particularly delighted to welcome to you to Nagaland, the Lena Festival, and Timapur, the vibrant gateway to the state. And as per the itinerary that I have seen, I believe, we hope you, you, you will be visiting Kohima, uh, which is a memorable one. Kohima, the capital city, offers a unique blend of rich cultural heritage 
natural beauty nestled with the scenic hills and warm hospitality. So the Nordic Enesis Festival 2024, hosted at Tetsu College, promises to be a truly enriching experience and expect an abundance of learning, a strong sense of community, and a vibrant celebration of our diverse cultural heritage. We wish you an unforgettable time here, filled with new discoveries and lasting memories. We welcome each and everyone to this NSS Festival. Thank you so much. Honorable special guest for the inaugural session of Northeast NSS Festival, hosted by Tetsu College, Sri Ketuseto Sikose, the director of the Department of Youth Resource and Sports, Governor of Nagaland. The additional director of Youth Resource and Sports, Sir Mikolo Doli. Assistant director, Sir Novito. The Youth Resource Officer, Ma'am Chupalanla Longchar. Mr. Talinung Sang the Dean of Tetsu College for representing the Director of Tetsu College, Sir Rukovito Zatsu, the State Analysis Officer, Governor of Nagaland, dignitaries on and off the ties, officials from the uh, Department of Youth Resource and Sports, Governor of Nagaland, that are directly and indirectly involved with the organization of this Nordic Genesis Festival. The administration of Detsu College, the teaching faculties that are present here, the non-teaching faculties that are working 24-7 to give the best experience of Nagaland to the participants from other states. <coughs> the different program officers, NSS program officers from nearby colleges out here in Dimapo, the different contingent leaders that have come here representing the different states of Nordist and my dear NSS volunteers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Fine. Just fine. You came to one of the most beautiful places, minus the heat out here, the temperature out here. But other than that, this is a beautiful place to be, and I'm really excited to see each and every one of you. And I'm standing here today with much gratitude and with much respect to each and every one of you for joining us. And I'm here, standing here not to give you a one-way discourse or lecture on what uh, Nordic Genesis Festival is about or what do we expect from you. But rather, I would like this to be an interactive one, all right? So first of all, I, want, I bring warm greetings from the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, that is our nodal ministry, and on behalf of the Regional Directorate of NSS, that is located in Guwahati and looks after the eight northeastern sta states, that means including Sikkim as well. Now, as we can see in the banner that is displayed here today, what is the theme of this Nordic Genesis Festival? We have been conversing about this, we had debates, we had discussions, we had much deliberations and after that we came up with this theme. And the theme that we have selected for this Naglen edition of the Northeast Genesis Festival will be Youth for My Bharat. Youth for my Bharat. Why did we choose this? I just want to give a brief overview about this with two questions and one probable solution. According to me, you might have better solutions and I would like to hear upon that as well. Now, if we look at the sentence called Youth for my Bharat, there are two words out there, right? One is youth, and the other one is my Bharat. Now, my Bharat, that means it is our motherland, it is our country, right? 
Right? All right. What about youth? Who are the youths? You are the youths. Right? I'm also one among them. Right? Now, am I, should I be included as well? All right. So we all have an important role to play out here. Now, if we talk about these two words, that means our country and youth, why did we select it? I have these two questions. What do we expect from the youth? What do we expect from the youth? That is one question. And the second question is, why does our country need youth? Okay, these are the two questions that I have for each and every one of us. First question is, what do we expect from the youth? Okay, the second one is, why does our country need the youth? All right, now, what do we expect from the youth of our country? If we are to ask that simple question, we are placed in a very, 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 very positive situation where our country, called by the name India, is the youngest country in the world. It is, in other words, it is also called demographic dividend. All right. That means, what is the population of a country? If I were to ask you the question, what is the total population of a country? It is 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion. And we'll be overtaking China within 5 to 10 years. And we'll become the most populous country in the world. All right? 1.4 billion means it will roughly translate into 140 crores. All right? Right? 140 crores means 14,000 lakhs. Right? If I'm not mistaken in my calculation, in my deduction. Okay. Out of this 140 crores of Indians, more than 65 of our population is below the age of 35 years. That means more than 90 crores of our population is below the age of 35, right? What does it mean? That means our country population is very young, all right? And when we use the word young population, young country, young nation, what does it mean for the country as a whole? For example, Right now, you are pursuing your 12th standard, semester one, semester four, semester eight, semester, and one or two years, you'll be graduating. After that, you'll become dependent on yourself, independent, right? You won't be depending on your parents, right? And that way, you'll, after graduation, you'll get a job, you'll become secured, you'll start a family. After that, you'll start earning, you'll build a house, you'll buy a car. Is it not the dream? Is it not the ambition? Right? That means you are dependent on your own. You can take care of your own business. Am I not right? Right? Okay. Once you reach the age of 60 years, will you not become dependent again? Because with all age, you have to retire from the job. After retirement, your salary will be reduced by minimum 50-60%, right? Your income will also become reduced. With old age, many health complications will arise. In that way, will, you will become dependent. But the thing is, just like in prime times of your life, our country is very young, very energetic, all right? That is the current scenario of our country right now. And I must take pride in saying that our country has the best or the maximum millennials. We also used to call your, you all GNZs, right? So we have the largest millennials and the GNZs in the entire planet. Now, 
All this means we have the energy, we have the resources. Right? We have the energy, we have the resources, we have the capability. So how do we keep or how do we play our role in taking our country forward? Now, the next question arises. Why does our country need youths? What our country expects from you? Now, our country attained independence in the year 1947. And in the year 2023, we celebrated 75 years of our independence, right? Have every one of you participated in that Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav? Yes, you remember? That was the 75th year of our country's independence. Now, we have entered into the second year. That means 75th, 76th, 77th, right? In another 23 to 24 years, we will be reaching 100 years. Now, for 75 years, our political leaders, our administrators, social workers, youth leaders, students, general public, everyone, businessmen, everyone was working to take our country forward, to make our country developed. And for 75 years, we have been known as, or we have been given the tag that we are a developing country, right? For 75 years, is it not enough? That's my question to you as well. In another 23, 24 years, we'll be reaching the 100 years milestone. During that time, will we want ourselves to be called developing again? Do you want our country to be called developing, still developing country again? No, right? We want our country to be developed, to be called a developed nation, to be treated at par with United States of America, Canada, UK, other European countries, right? That is the dream that we have. That is the dream that our current politicians, that our current administrators, social workers have in their mind, in their head. But to do that, we need the energy of the youth. All right? We need the energy of the youth. Because I can stand here and talk hundreds and hundreds of things, hundreds of dreams, visions, but to really implement it, it is the youth of our country. And luckily for us, as I've stated earlier, more than 75% of our population is below the age of 35 years. Now, going deeper again into the topic, it is also very sad to like acknowledge actually, to acknowledge ourselves that our country is also producing 60 to 70 lakhs of graduates every year, okay? In one or two years, every one of you will be a graduate. After that, you might join a master's degree. You might join BHT, all right? You might go for other, some other professional courses. So our country is producing 50 to 60 lakhs of graduates every year. Out of that, only 20%, 20 to percent are employable at all. On one hand, we are talking about the biggest problem for the youth is unemployment. The biggest problem for the youth is unemployment. We used to complain that politicians are the problem. We used to complain that the policies of the government are not working. But again, on the other side, if we look deeper in, into these issues, studies suggest that out of those 50 to 60 lakhs of graduates that we produce every year, only 20% of them are employable. Why? I mean to say that even if you score 95%, 80%, 90%, 99%, in some cases 100% during, during, during your graduation, during your 12th standard, but that alone won't help you in getting a job, and getting the job that you dream about. Alright? 
the recruiters will be looking for skills and that's where are the youths of our country is failing because other than your good scores in your academic records you also need you also need to have certain sets of skills like it can be about teamwork it can be about your personal leadership it can be about your time management it can be about your confidence in public speaking it can be about your soft skills it can be about working independently it can be about working collaboratively these are the skills that is that are required for different sets of jobs all right so out of those 50 60 lakh graduates 20 percent gets employment the remaining 20 30 percent gets employment somewhere but they will never be satisfied with the job that they have and the remaining 60 percent will remain unemployed that is the present scenario of our country those certain layer gets employment the second layer gets employment but they won't be satisfied because after completing your masters in uh, chemistry you'll be working as a primary teacher in a school after doing phd and anthropology you'll be working as a bank clerk all right so in that way our problem is our country is facing such problems and i hope that this platform this northeast nss festival that the government of india has provided for the youths of our country of our country of our northeastern states is a good platform where you come together now that you are here in tetsu college you are no longer from Mizoram. You are no longer from Meghalaya. You are no longer from Sikkim. All right? You are here together as one family, as a brother, as a sister, as a colleague, as a peer group. You should try to learn from each other. All right? Not only about the rich tradition, rich culture, rich way of life, thinking, but at the same time, out of the box solution. All right, out of the box brainstorming sessions should happen amongst yourself because we want you to make use of this platform so that the integration, the uh, the remix, the mixing up of minds coming together from different places and getting mixed up and something something good coming out of it is the vision that we have from each and every one of you so what do we get at the bottom of this that means i just want to put one word i propose one word to each and every one of you that this platform should be the platform where you start to initiate a something very important called change okay change is the ultimate thing that we need to straight away start with because change is the only permanent thing let me bring an example i was born in the ninth year 1980s all right so when the smartphone when mobile phone came i think that was in the late 1990s late 1990s that's when people started using mobile phones all right at the first only big shots were using a black box and we were told that it is a mobile phone otherwise we use and our family my family was not fortunate enough to have even a landline telephone so whenever we needed to talk whenever we did we had some emergency situation we had to like say go and make use of our neighbor's telephone that's that was the way of life during our times and suddenly the word mobile phone came into existence and after that we saw like say politicians administrators big shots businessmen started using a small uh, box which is very uh, which is black in color and it was called mobile phone and after that slowly slowly we had that uh, like say black and white mobile phones and after that slowly we had color mobile phones and after that slowly smartphones came into existence all right but during all those years, 
we had only one brand in our mind in the market and that was called Nokia, right? Nokia was the king of mobile phones and for 10, 15 to 20 years, they ruled the market. They ruled the market like anything, as if there was no tomorrow. Like you might see uh, memes these days, which are being circulated that, like say, the durability of the mobile phone, which is still in existence, even today. Now, there was a time when uh, 2000, it, uh, maybe it was around 2004 or 5 that the smartphone, like say the wave of smartphone was very strong and it was catching up and the world has started appreciating uh, smartphones, uh, touch screen phones and all. And there was a time when Android was introduced. What is the operating system that you are using right now in your mobile phones? Is it not Android? except some very fortunate ones who might be using Apple phone, all of your phone operating system will be Android, okay? And in the year, during the year 2000, uh, 2004 to five, there was a huge change in the market and Nokia was actually approached by the Android thing, that this is the future of the operating system of a mobile phone and that we want to partner with Nokia mobile phone company. But that time, due to some, like say, reasons, they couldn't partner up. And that's how within three, four years, Nokia lost all the entire market share. And after that, what came into existence? Samsung came into existence. Lava came into existence. Micromax came into existence. Motorola came into existence. Name some. Friend? Hmm? Idea. HTC. So that's how Nokia was taken over by other <laughs> smartphone companies. What I want to point out here is unless and until you keep on growing, until and unless you adapt to new changes, unless and until you are ready to make the change and grow as the society might demand, as the country might expect from you, you will one day become obsolete. You will one day become useless. You will one day become irrelevant if you don't change and if you don't grow. All right? So our country needs you to be on the forefront the youth of our country is our resources. The future belongs to you. In another 10, 15, 20 years, you will be the person sitting out here. You will be the doctor, you will be the IAS, you will be the IPS. You will be the businessman, you will be the owner of this college. That is your future. And we want your future to be bright. That's why we want you to start initiating the changes from this moment onwards, let this five days be filled with lots of learning, lots of experience sharing amongst each and every one of you. Learn from each other, make new friends. We North Easterners are very comfortable with our own comfort zone that we just like to stay with our own Sikkim group, own Nagaland group, don't do that out here, okay? Make many friends, go back, start initiating the change in your family. Start initiating the change in your school, in your college, in your community, in your state. Only when Sikkim, only when Nagaland, only when Aranjal Pratesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram becomes developed, starts developing, only then our country will also start developing. Only when all the states combine together, we combine all those efforts together, only then our country can also move forward. So in short, that is my like say, brief, like request, words of encouragement that I had in my mind for each and every one of you. And I really want to thank the administration of Tetsu College for allowing us to host this Northeast NSS Festival. And I'm also equally thankful to the officials headed by our director, Department of Youth Resorts and Sports, Corona of Nagaland, for taking the initiative and being a part of this inaugural session. 
uh, and placing us with our guidance, uh, with your guidance there as well. Your presence out here shows the dedication, the sincerity that you have for the future implementation of NSS program in our state as well. So once again, thank you very much for your patience and listening. And I hope that this five days will give you the best experience that we have planned and the best experience of Naglen will offer to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Thank you. Chairperson for today, Ms. Sen Senjum Benny K. Jami, Mr. Daniel M. Khan, Talinung Sang, the Dean, Zhang Ji Long, the Regional Director, NSS, the SNO Rokovitio, my officers from the Directorate of Youth Resources and Sports, Program Officers. Deans, professors of various colleges and institutions in and around the region. My dear 
NSS friends from the eight northeastern states of the country. My dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm immensely happy that I was invited to this program, though probably it's a dampener to the spirit because most of us were waiting for our original special guest, the ever dynamic and social media friendly minister from the state of Nagaland, Sri Temjan Im Nalong, who is a young leader like all of you. Unfortunately, for an official program, he had been called back to Delhi, and therefore he has not been able to come to this program. However, though insignificant, I would like to propose myself to take his place and address all of you on his behalf. He sends his greetings to each one of you, particularly to our friends from the various states, neighboring states. Before we begin, I would like to know uh, the participants from the states. Let us start with, say, Assam. Can you raise your hands? Oh, great. Then from Arunachal. Oh, welcome. Then from Sikkim. Yes, I thought this was from Sikkim. Then from uh, Manipur. Mm, no, my bro. Then uh, Nagaland. Great, great, you're the host. Then I think our Mizoram friends are yet to come. Mizoram? Yeah. Tripura? Oh, great. There's a good number from Tripura. Did I miss out any state? Megalaya. Oh, Meghalaya. Yes. One of the most beautiful states in our region. Welcome, welcome. I welcome all of you once again to this land of festivals. You know, Nagaland is predominantly a Christian state. However, all the festivals, all the major festivals of the country is celebrated in this state. We have, we celebrate the Durga Puja. We celebrate the festivals of Islam, Sikhism, of Christians, and in fact, almost all the region, religion that is there in our country. We are called land of festival, mainly because we have 16 tribes and each tribe has got at least two to three festivals to be celebrated every year. And all this feature in our official calendar. Some as regular holidays, some as restricted holidays. And we also celebrate the famous Hornbill Festival for 10 days from the 1st of December to the 10th of December every year. This year, Nagaland will be celebrating 25 years of Hornbill Festival. It's going to be a silver jubilee and I wish this festival, this NSS festival was conducted during that time. We would have been able to take you all around. But I'm sure our officers here have made programs to take you around Kohima Am I right? And then uh, probably they'll be able to take you around some historical places as well as places of happening. Though it's rainy season, I don't know, have your umbrellas ready, but the rain is not cold now. Only in the winter you'll find the rain to be cold. We have had a very nice talk from the regional director, Jaji Long. Continuing his points, I would also like to point one thing. You know, during our management studies, we used to have something called the case studies. During our case studies, we studied something about promise toothpaste. Anybody know what is a promise toothpaste? You know what's Colgate? Yes. Promise toothpaste? No? You know, at one point of time, promise toothpaste was the best selling brand as far as toothpaste goes in our country. And how did it become the best-selling brand? You know, in every toothpaste, you will find clove oil. In, you know, in Nagamis, we call long. In Hindi, also, I think, call long. The one that you take in pan sometimes or in your curries. When you prepare garam masala, you put long also. So this clove oil, you'll find in almost all the toothpaste. But the company, the brand promise, 
they specifically highlighted this cloth oil because cloth oil was used by your great grandmother whenever your grandfather had a toothache okay and they specified this particular thing about promise in the in their toothpaste though every toothpaste had it and with that when our country was still you know uh, we still have our traditional values even today but that value was quite strong at that point of time and they utilize it and that made promise toothpaste into a brand of every Indian household at one point of time since many of you today doesn't know and like our original director had stated probably they could not change and then they failed but I'm not trying to talk to you about the change that is required in you, which you already know. I'm trying to tell you that each and every one of you have got similar qualities, similar capabilities, similar strengths even. Now, those who succeed amongst you will be those who are able to actually take out those finer points in your character, finer points in your abilities and you know compound on them build on them and that is what I would like each and every one of you to look into yourself you are going to go through about four or five days of programs during the time maybe a lot of things will be bombarded on you including even your career counseling also but I would like you to take back, back that thing when you go back from here from this particular program look into yourself maybe which every one of us may be thinking, it's not important, man. But I'm telling you, that could be the one which changes you. That could be what may make you into a man or a woman. This festival, the Nordic NSS Fest Festival, as you all know, is a very important part and partial of the NSS programs. Last year we had in Nalan, we had in uh, St. Joseph, College at Zakama, where I also attended, fortunately, and I had interactions with the participants there. It was very encouraging. And even now, I'm so happy that young minds like you, youthful minds, youthful people like you, with full of energy, you have come to attend. I would want that each one of you take back at least one good thing from here for yourself so that you can really say not me but you until unless you are able to stand on your own two feet until unless you are able to build you will not be able to help and that is one thing which i would like you to understand be firm on your foot then you'll be able to help your other friend your brother your sister whoever it is you'll be able to pick them up we have a famous you know saying in the bible that a person when you try to help someone take out the dirt from his eyes it is your you have to first look into your eyes whether you have dirt or not in your eyes perhaps that is something to learn from similarly in all the religions of the world particularly all those religions which are practiced in our country we can always get many good things are we actually doing that look back is our country actually doing that you know I was made to understand that civilizations move around the world if we look back there was the Greek civilization there was the Roman Empire em, em, Empire where they controlled almost you know the whole of the world of the known world at that point of time then we had the empires in the Middle East we had the Mongols in India we had the Mughals now where is the superpower power located as far as economy and military is concerned it is in the States in the US Americas but a time is coming when it is going to come back and we as Indians have to be prepared for that like our regional director said we are a country with 60 to 65 percent 
of the youth, uh, the population as youth. And probably we are now getting our grounds ready, setting up you and me, particularly you, because when that thing comes, you are going to be the leaders of this country. You are going to be the leaders of your state. You are going to be leaders of your people. And you have to be ready for that. I wish all of you the best and have a wonderful time in Nagaland. Any problem, we are there. Okay. And we, Nagas, would like to pamper our guests. Anything you find lacking, let us know. Have a very good time and God bless you all. Thank you.